Okay, it's 5, 5, 5.51 p.m. I uh, submitted the <laughs> online um, loan application for to buy that car. It was uh, two thousand dollars was the loan application, and yeah, so. Uh, <sighs> I um um. I just beat my veggies too. I'm so tired and so hot. So, uh, I made a video previously talking about this, but then I offed it because I got distracted. So, I'm, I'm trying to make this video again. Um, anyway, so I told them, like, you know, uh, I bought an iPhone 6S Plus. And I paid it back, and I got another iPhone, and I'm planning to pay it back. So, and I'm trying to, what can aid, they're asking, what else can aid in your application? And I told them the reason I don't have a job is because uh, I have a psychosocial disability, and I'm on the disability pension, and I'm an NDIS participant. I also told them that I have plans to move out next year. And also mentioned, hey, I might move to Albury, as a possible, or to Armidale, or interstate. And I told them, yes, I understand that moving out will place uh, additional financial stress, but based on a budget which I've been uh, working on and reviewing, I am confident that I can uh, pay the 90 to $100 per month, because I think the repayment will be like... 90 to 100 dollars per month it's kind of like my phone you know my phone was like what like i, I just uh, the 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 iphone 6s plus i ended up paying like uh, over six grand over two years uh not six grand sorry three grand. <laughs> six grand is a bit much but whereas this one i'll be paying like a, a little maybe around fifteen hundred dollars over one year i chose to Paid this over one year, so I do have I do have some evidence of repaying loans, so that should help my application. Um, I also said, while I haven't always paid back money I borrowed from family, uh, it's kind of true, like family, you know. I was I also told them like I wanted. To, the reason, only reason I'm uh, applying for this is because I can't borrow any mo money from a family member. Um, yeah, there have been times in the past where you know I've borrowed money from my brother, maybe even my mother. Or probably, yes, definitely my brother. I haven't paid back the loan, and uh, well, I guess I have, it's mostly the rent, you know, like because sometimes I haven't uh like even though all three of us are on the rental lease my brother pays the rent and i pay my you know some money of mine to him and i haven't always done that like uh, so so oh so anyway but, but when it comes to like borrowing money from companies like i've paid back there was one uh, instance I think when the, the Optus loan was sort of like overdue but I think that's because I didn't change my expired card. I think that was the reason. That's what I said. It was during the coronavirus thing. I hope that's the reason because it is to the best of my knowledge and understanding. With the Optus Oh, I'm so tired. Anyway, I can't find it.
Yeah, I mean, I paid it. Uh, when I found out the thing was due or something, I immediately paid it. So it wasn't like I was like uh, you know, in arrears. I, I did pay it back once I found out that the one payment, you know, it's like forty dollars. I, I think it's. I, I can't. I mean, I can't go to all the details and stuff now. That's just to the best of my knowledge. I could be wrong, but it's to the best of my knowledge. Ooh. And I am uh, prepared to check back and confirm. If, uh, why am I even making this dumb video? Because right. someone's going to watch it and say, You liar, you committed fraud on the application. You told them that you didn't pay one bill of forty dollars because the card was expired but may maybe the truth is so it has something to do with covid either way i still paid it i, st I still paid the money what is the reason uh I, I, once i found out that you, uh, that was like this, this stuff this upside i was stop being so self-critical there's a big problem I have is being very judgmental and self critical. It's a self critical. Yeah, so I you know I sent in the application with a loan. Uh, they said they'll get back to me within one to three days, probably business days. And I let the uh, seller of the car know, um, you know, uh, told them that I sent in a loan and. Um, and, and and I'll I'll uh, contact them within a one to three days business days about the outcome of the loan application, and uh, I told them I don't know if I needed to say this, but I told them if you uh, change your mind about selling the car or you, or you or you sold it to someone else or you or you or you found another buyer, please let me know. I don't know if I needed to say that because it's like. Does it sound manipulative? Because, I mean, he has uh, every right to change his mind or uh, because we haven't entered into a contract, right? The contract only is entered into when there's the exchange. So the, when he gives me the car and I give the money, that's when the contract is formed, right? Um, <coughs> so. When I said, I, uh, when I said, oh, please let me know if you change your mind about selling the car or you found another buyer, I'm sort of like, I didn't want to, like, him to feel obliged to hold the car for me. But then I'm thinking, well, that's not, uh, he, he, why would he feel obliged to hold the car for me just because I said, um, I guess, <laughs> I guess what I wanted to say is, but I didn't end up saying, I guess what I wanted to say is, I have, uh, I sent in an application for a loan, uh, I will, could you hold a car for me until I get, uh, um, until I know whether my loan has been approved? I guess that is what I wanted to say, but instead what I said was, if you change your mind about selling the car, or if you found another buyer, please let me know. That seems kind of passively manipulative. It's not. Mani I don't know if it's manipulative. It's just like not being very direct. Afraid of being direct. Ah, yeah. It's, not, it's afraid of being rejected because I was like afraid that if I asked him to hold a car for me while the loan is being processed. Process and if he says no, now I would feel so rejected and so hurt. So instead of facing the possibility of the seller saying no, I'm not going to hold the car, I said, uh, Could you, um, if you, if you do change your mind or if you find another buyer, please let me know. I got a response saying yes, uh, but I, you know, that's they said they will, uh, okay, but um. I was looking at my own psychology, like, I'm so scared of being rejected, like, I really hate it when people say no, it's like, I, I get very traumatized, and, 
it, it just gets it just becomes so personal and it, it's it always uh, invokes this it always create you know I get these traumatizing feelings of rejection and even when someone like you know, like a stranger <laughs> complete stranger I don't know says no or I think will say no so instead of putting myself at the mercy uh, of being potentially rejected by someone saying no to a request I, 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 so instead of having to face the possibility of someone saying no to a request I, I said something like oh if you do change your mind or Find another buyer, please let me know. I know that seems kind of passive aggressive. It's a, it's passive something. It's a passively indirect way of hmm, I'm not really sure what it is. A passive way of communicating uh, something unspoken. Uh, I guess uh, maybe it is manipulated because I'm trying to make the seller feel guilty or I mean the seller doesn't need to feel anything but why did I say it the way I did I guess I'm t I guess what I what I wanted the seller to know was that I am taking on a loan listen to me I am taking on a loan I apply for a loan so like without saying it like just by letting the seller know that I've applied for a loan I'm trying to make them feel obliged to hold on to the car for me because I've made a loan and uh, you know if they sold the car to someone else well you know I, I just I just got a I'm, I applied for a loan and I got a loan and what if I got the loan and then you sold the car to someone else what am I going to do with the loan so it is a manipulative <laughs> It is a manipulative, passive way of uh, asking the seller to hold the car for me without directly requesting it. Because this is, because if I directly ask the seller to hold the car for me, then they might say no, at which point I'll feel very rejected and hurt. Uh, but if I s told them I'm, I apply for a loan, uh, then this way... Um, the seller knows, oh, they applied for a loan, so maybe I should hold on to the scarf for them. Uh, so it's an they, it's an indirectly indirectly sort of letting the seller know that maybe they should hold on the car to me because and I also said is I should I should know within one to three days so they don't have to hold on to the car for a, a long time. And if the seller says no, or or, or if the seller sells the car or, or finds another buyer, I'm like. Oh yeah, sure. You know, I wasn't. I didn't ask you to hold it for me, so you know, it's okay. You know, you found someone else. Not a big deal, <laughs> because I already said it. Oh, if you if you change your mind or find someone else, let me know. So it's like a very indirect way of letting them know that I applied for a loan. So they of, of of trying to encourage them to hold on to the car for me. But at the same time, also giving me a way of escaping, like saying, "Oh, if they did find someone else or change their mind, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, you know, that's all right." I mean, you know. <laughs> so it's an indirect way of trying to tell them to, "Hey, I applied for a loan. Just don't sell it to anyone, right?" But I'm, uh, I didn't. I don't know if it's that strong, but it's sort of. You see how how um, perhaps it is manipulative uh, a manipulation born out of uh, my fear of being rejected which creates trauma negative feelings for me I don't know if I would be strong enough to say it's manipulative because uh, it's not really a very conscious thing it just happens very unconsciously like it's a very like when I wrote the thing, it's not like I'm saying, "Oh, okay, I want to manipulate the whole situation." No, it's, it happens. All, it's the the thought process is motivated by the fear of being rejected, not wanting to. 
and at the same time I don't feel like imposing I don't feel like asking people to do things for me so instead of asking the seller hey could you hold on the car for me I see yeah that's another thing I, I find it difficult to ask people to do things like oh can you hold on to the car because I, I feel like if they if I ask them then I owe them something but no so if I ask someone to do something that doesn't mean like they ha if I ask someone to do something it doesn't mean that they have to say yes and then I have to owe them something no if I ask them to do something they have the freedom to say yes or no and if they say yes I guess there is an expectation that I would sort of uh, play my part or do you know if I said can you hold on to the car for me until my loan is processed and the seller says okay uh, then then my role is to uh, find out what the application says and communicate that to the seller right but if I oh man I'm not making this some I mean, this is such a I'm not just very tired. Uh, am I making such a big deal out of this? I mean, I don't know. I just, uh, yeah, man. I just, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I guess I don't. I just don't know what's going to happen. You know, I don't know if I, if if the, if I'm going to get. I don't know if my loan is going to be approved. I don't, and e and uh, even and even and I don't know if I'm going to be able to buy this car. You know, it could be the case that my loan is not approved. In which case, okay, I can't buy the car. That's pretty straightforward. But if my loan is approved, and the seller finds another buyer, that means, you know, I would have a loan, and then I have no car to buy. And I'm thinking, can I then go back to the bank and say, hey, the person I want, the car I wanted to buy has been sold. Can you cancel this loan? I mean, I was reading the terms of their loan and um, it says, it's not a term, this is some kind of uh, document. It's called general conditions or something. It says, can I terminate the contract on this on page? Uh, 11. It says, yes, you can terminate the contract by writing to the credit provider so long as you have not obtained any credit under the contract or a card or other means of obtaining credit given to you by a credit provider has not been used to acquire goods or services for which credit is to be provided under the contract. However, you will still have to pay any fees or charges incurred before you terminate the contract. So. Does this mean if I have the money, let's say the bank gives me the money and uh, you know what, I, st I, I have not entered into the contract, you see, I've only sent in an application for a loan and the bank can come back and say, yes, uh, your application is accepted. That doesn't mean that I still have to agree and say yes. Uh, the, if the banks, if the bank says your yeah, loan has your yeah, loan has been approved, I don't think the contract forms at that point. I think I have to then agree to the bank by saying signing a contract, right? Signing an actual contract, you know, because you know. So if the bank, if the if the bank says my loan has been approved. <coughs> Then I can go to the seller and say, "Hey, my loan is approved. Are you uh, are you ready to sell?" Yeah. So in that case, if the seller says, "Oh no, I, I have found another buyer," then I can say, "Okay, no worries." And then I can go back to the bank and tell them, "Oh, you know, the car, the, um, the the car is not a, you know has been sold or whatever, and therefore I do not need the contract. Uh, I do not need the loan, and I can." No, I don't have to take on the loan then, right? Yeah, I, uh, so I applied for the loan, but that doesn't mean uh, I have I have actually entered into the contract, you see? 
because I thought that simply by sending in the application, the contract has, and if I sent in the application and the bank accepted the application, that means the contract was formed on the moment the bank accepted the application. But no, I think the contract is formed when I take the money. Yeah, I think the contract is formed when I take the money, I didn't, this is something I studied in law contract, and another one, there's offer and there's acceptance. Uh, so I offered to, to repay the loan, the bank gives me the loan. <laughs> there has to be exchange an acceptance. There's only all these steps. Uh, anyways, uh, that's what I'm thinking. I hope that I hope that my loan is approved, and I hope that the seller still uh, wants to sell the car when I uh, when my loan is approved. And then I hope that I can actually go and get the car. Yeah. So it's all like kind of floating in the air at the moment. Yeah. Mm.